Hi everyone, welcome to another Honeystocks.com Stock Market Outlook video for the month of September. Now before I switch over to my screen share and walk you through many of the charts that I think many of you are wondering about, um, I just want to take the opportunity again to thank everybody. Um, I think many of you wish that I could upload more videos than I do uh, to social media. The unfortunate reality is that uh, I'm just way too busy to, to, to upload and communicate every few days, every every week even as a, as, a, as a bit of a struggle, just purely because of the size of my client uh, base. But I will do my best to walk through many of the charts that I've been communicating to our clients over the last uh, week to 10 days. Um, I think the big question on everybody's lips at the moment is, is the bear market rally now officially over and can we now expect a race to the June lows? That's really the question that, that I, I want to try and get to uh, and try and uh, break down some of the charts to, to give some insight. Uh, but as most of you know, I don't use the magical hindsight indicator. I timestamp all my work, which is very, very important in this in this field. I think there are maybe only two other analysts that have called the market as, as well as I have over the last year. I think you've got Mike Wilson over at Morgan Stanley and Michael Hartnett at Bank of America. Um, if you are new to my work, um, I've called the, the market top at the start of the year. I've called the bottom uh, of the bear market rally and I've also made a recent call in it being the end of a bear market rally. So we'll need to see how things play out but that's really the way that I'm viewing things at the moment. Now I'm not a day trader, I use technical analysis in a logical manner, I do not overcomplicate things and I hope that that shines through with my work. Uh, but if you do get some value from this, please do like, share and subscribe, it all helps uh, with things like algorithms etc. Uh, and feel free to, to follow me on Twitter as well, uh, Honeystocks. So, Let's dive into some charts. Let's see if we can break down what's going on. Now, before I get into the charts, please pause the video. Make sure you're comfortable with that before watching any further. It basically just says that there's not any investment advice. Do your own due diligence and don't be silly. Uh, I'm also registered with the CMT Association. Technical analysis is something that I'm widely known for in the professional game. And like I said before, if you do get some value, uh, please do like and subscribe. Now the big question I think at the moment is really along the lines of after yesterday's uh, declines in the market with Jerome Powell and the uh, Jackson Hole uh, speech that he's given, where does the, the market kind of go from here? Now when we look at seasonality, now I just want to draw your attention, this is the S&P 500 over the last 70 years. Uh, we can see that August now is showing a, a negative return and going into September, I highlight this every single year to our high, uh, clients and members that we need to be very, very cautious going into September. Now, when we piece all the information together, like the, the yield curve, which is getting worse, we know that when the yield curve inverts, it really is a precursor to a recession, which is really the, the shaded areas here. Um, so we know that the yield curve inverts before a recession. So everybody's expecting a recession. And we know that stocks don't tend to fare too well in a recession. Now, there's a big debate at the moment about what actually constitutes a recession. Lots of economists that like that kind of data are arguing over it. I prefer to pay attention to price because I feel that price is more reliable, certainly uh, in the short to mid term. We know that consumer credit is at fresh all time highs set against a plummeting personal savings rate. We've got negative uh, GDP. And if you have been following me for a while, you'll know that this is a chart that I've put out a few times, just highlighting uh, the S&P 500 and bearish targets that Michael Burry has been flashing to everybody 
that, that will listen. And whilst I don't necessarily subscribe to the thoughts of Michael Burry, and um, but this is the, the chart that I believe that he's looking at. And, and all he's really doing is comparing previous crashes and, and how the subsequent crash um, undercuts the, the laws of the previous crash and it does make a lot of sense to me now if you don't know who Michael Burry is he's the guy from the big short and certainly he has the, the track record of making these kind of calls so certainly it's something to pay attention to because if he is correct it would show that the S&P 500 has a lot further to go now rather than pay attention to outlandish bearish targets. The charts that I like to pay attention to are things like the US dollar. Now, the reason that the US dollar is a, a big deal for my work is it has been the defensive asset to own uh, over the course of the last uh, nine months. I think we all probably understand that there's a negative correlation with the S&P 500. So as the US dollar has been rising, we've had a declining S&P 500. Now, as a European, that's been great for me to own US dollars. It's been a very, very stress-free ride, and I'm quite happy with that. But what I'm looking at at the moment is what would be the implications for stocks if the US dollar was to break out on a daily chart basis. We already know that the, the monthly chart has a, an upper target here. This has been my chart for a while uh, of 120. So if the US dollar is going to get to 120, what does that mean for stocks? We know that over the course of the last six weeks, the, the US dollar has taken a bit of a decline and that has uh, coincided with a, a rally in US stocks, which I'm hoping everybody that follows me and uh, has been following my work over the last couple of months, hopefully you've done very, very well on stocks. But now the question I have at the moment is, is the bear market rally now coming to an end? We just need to have a look at the major averages. Now, I will get into this in a little bit more depth, but this is really just the monthly chart. And I like to pay attention to monthly charts when they start to print these kind of uh, candles because it just tells us on a very, very simplistic uh, basis that we're meeting a headwind for stocks. There's a lot of selling pressure coming in. We're seeing it across the S&P. We're seeing it across tech, obviously the Dow. And the small caps, which I should highlight, have been outperforming over the course of the last uh, few weeks. But as we can see, there's a lot of selling pressure starting to come into the, the major averages. So that's telling me that we're potentially starting to enter into another risk-off environment. Um, now, this is a chart that, that I have communicated over the course of the last 10 days. I just want to make it very, very clear that I've not, I'm not using magical hindsight indicators here. I have been on record with these charts. Feel free to go and check out our uh, recent weekly letter. But the S&P 500 um, has run into a confluence of significant technical hurdles. Now, this is really... The, the charts that I've been communicating to our, our clients and members over the last two weeks is to expect this level to act as a big barrier for price. Now, of course, that has absolutely played out. And um, the question really that we have is, what can we expect? Are we going to go and retest the, the June lows? Now, of course, we've no clue if that will actually happen. But the way that I like to use uh, technical analysis when assessing the broader market is really to understand whether or not it's a risk-on or a risk-off environment. This is not a, a risk-on environment for me. Now, I'm sure there's many of you that are watching that have the investing mindset and you're quite happy to, to add on 30% declines in dollar cost average, etc. I get it. Uh, but that's not the game that I like to play. I like to manage risk 
So positions that have been meeting our upside objectives, um, I'm quite happy to remove those and buy them back lower. I think that just makes a lot more sense because I don't like the mental hurdles um, and the challenges that that presents when we start to see these big sell-offs. We know that the, the triple Qs didn't actually reach the levels that I was expecting uh, tech to get to, but I will go over some of the big tech charts in a second. Again, we've got the Dow Jones. Again, given the uh, that it mirrors the S&P, the Dow has run into a level that, again, you would absolutely expect a sell-off. Again, the, the market was in an overbought condition as well. The, the market had rallied 15 18%, so it's to be expected that the market has to cool off. So the big question is, how, how big is this, this sell-off going to be? And we just have to wait and see what happens there. Again, the Russell 2000 running into the exact kind of same problems as, as the other averages. So when we put it all together, again, when we drill it into the individual names, for example, and you know, for those of you that, again, follow my work closely, I've been asked about Amazon a lot because I made a bottom call on this at 100. I called the... Um, the top here a few weeks ago and again it has played out so again a lot of upside objectives are being met in some of the mega caps and given the weightings that these stocks have again Google running into uh, overhead resistance we've got Apple again getting close to, to upside objectives and, and close to testing all-time highs there are some individual areas of the market though that are doing incredibly well and Certainly when you look at, you know, the energy space, I think natural gas has been a big one recently. Um, we can look at things like ConocoPhillips. Now, this is one of our high conviction names that was put to our clients uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, again, names like ConocoPhillips, I know that, you know, many of you will be fixated with growth tech and all the rest of it and the small caps and but there are names that if you are a sophisticated investor and you are prepared to go and look at other areas of the market you can find some joy in some of the oil and gas names we know that microsoft is holding on to a, a big level here so the big question i have is you know what happens if Microsoft and we start to see bigger sell-offs in Amazon, Apple, etc. I think that probably brings the major averages under a lot more pressure. So I'm watching these charts like a hawk, but ultimately with names like Microsoft, with Google, with Amazon, and um, with Tesla, even um, I think these are names that that you can look to potentially look to to add on dips. Uh, but I will be keeping a very, very close eye on some support and basic support and resistance levels because I think that makes a lot of sense at the moment. Uh, again, I wouldn't be rushing in uh, and buying up every dip. But you know, if if you are able to you know buy on support levels and and define the risk, which really means just having a a level where your bullish thesis maybe starts to come apart. Um, if we start to break down below these levels, then you're probably going to find that that's an environment where stocks and the, the market as a whole is coming under uh, severe pressure. Um, we've got Freeport McMoran. Uh, again, a chart that I'm asked about a lot. Um, I called the, the bottom on this one uh, back in uh, July. It's had a 30 odd percent move, but managing risk really just means having a process in place that takes you out the the position and removes thoughts and feelings from the equation it's very very important in my opinion to have a a process um, acting on impulse rarely works in my opinion so i think it makes a lot of sense if you are um, in the game at the moment i think it makes a lot of sense to pay attention to some technical levels because big uh, targets are being met. If you look at something like Costco, again, made a bottom call on this one, and it's meeting massive upside objectives. So I think it, it does certainly uh, pay to, to, to pay attention to, to what price and the market as a whole is really telling us. Uh, now, please do hit like, 
uh, and subscribe if you're still here. It probably tells me that you're getting a little bit of value uh, from my work. But if you are somebody that is new to my work, uh, feel free to, to go and check out our website at honeystocks.com. Uh, we provide uh, memberships to all of our premium work and our updated charts. Uh, for example, this weekend, our, our clients and members are getting a playbook for how to navigate the current environment. Um, but we provide a premium weekend analysis to all of our clients and members, uh, provide high conviction investment ideas, which I'm fully transparent with. There's a, a full page on our website where you can go and scrutinize that. I provide a midweek halftime report, I provide access to a wonderful community, uh, community and also access to our stock ETFs and commodities chart book, which is uh, very, very popular with our clients and members. And if you are somebody that is looking to maybe learn technical analysis, then uh, certainly we provide full access to our, our technical analysis program uh, with all of our memberships. But like I said at the start, I timestamp all of my work um, the analysis on my website is real-time analysis that was provided to our clients and members. You can go back to the crash of 2020. Um, you can also see now, I've just uploaded um, the, the analysis provided to our members back in January. Um, so again, feel free to, to scrutinize that. But just to show you what our high conviction ideas look like, I know many of you just like trade alerts and investment alerts. Um, that's a recent alert that went out for ConocoPhillips at 100. Recent uh, steel index, which um, exited yesterday uh, for a very, very uh, handsome profit. We've got short ideas in a declining market, very, very flexible long or short, M massive move to the downside a few months ago for the commodity index, for Zillow, for Box. Um, but like I said, very, very open and transparent about the charts that I put out to our clients and members. Since I've started this, I, I have logged every single one of them and um, they're all published on our website for complete transparency. But I think if you are somebody that has a midterm approach, maybe you're not having much joy day trading, maybe you're just too busy with work, family, business, work, Maybe you're just sick of hunting around social media. I know what it's like, so feel free to go and do all your own due diligence on our website. But if you've stuck around to the end, thank you very much for watching and maybe we can welcome you soon. Thanks very much.